This video is sponsored by Intel and their new 12th gen Intel Core H series processor. Yeah, I like having the option of playing my games portably. I like having my retro library portably. If a game comes out on multiple consoles, I'll opt to play that game on whatever console I can take with me. But sometimes that's not always an option. I recently started playing more games on PC. It's been a while since I've used a PC as my main gaming device, like 20 years. Also lately, all these cool new handheld devices have been popping up that promise the power of PC gaming, but they're always lacking in some sort of weird way, to the point where I just ask myself, why wouldn't I just get a gaming laptop? Good question. Valorant requires a keyboard and mouse. Warzone, Fortnite, Genshin Impact, and Valorant all require their own launchers. So it's a pain trying to get it to work on all of these other devices. So these devices that I already have just aren't going to cut it. Plus, how cool would it be to be able to play these games at up to 240 hertz, even up to 360 frames per second? Whoa. At a crisp 1440p from wherever I want. And play them smoothly. I've never experienced anything like this outside of my big beefy desktop setup. You want to play right now? Right now. Okay, yeah, no, I got it. No, it's fine. It's just some background noise. We're good. This guy right here is an Asus ROG Strix Scar 17. Did you write all that down? It has a 3080 Ti in it, which is part of what's powering this big, beautiful screen. A matte anti-glare 2560 by 1440. It also goes up to 240 hertz, but the GPU can render higher frame rates than that. You can get 360 frames per second on an external display if you really wanted to, which, as we all know, is like the whole reason some people opt to play games on PC, especially competitive shooters. I'm sure you know somebody who decided to dump a couple thousand dollars into a big monstrous gaming setup. Well, imagine if that setup didn't have to be monstrous and you can take it with you anywhere. Me. But that 3080 Ti isn't gonna be enough to process all of those frames by itself. Picking up the slack is the 12th generation Intel Core i9-12900HK mobile processor. Did you get all that? Did you write all that down? Yeah, no, I got it. I should not be winning these gunfights right now. Okay, that's more like it. Even though it's got a lot of power in here, of course, your mileage is gonna vary depending on what game you're gonna wanna play. And the screen might only be capable of 1440p, 240 hertz, but if you plug this thing into an external display, it can do way more than that because of that Intel processor and that graphics card combination. I've only recently started messing around with high frame rates because of the new consoles, and I never really understood why people wanted high frame rates so badly in stuff like competitive shooters, until I got a console and a monitor that was capable of it, and then I kind of saw the light. And now I'm seeing stuff up to 240 hertz, and man, I wasn't expecting ADSing in Valorant to kind of blow me away. Oh my God, it's so smooth. Just don't expect it to make you better at any of these games. So Nvidia says around like 230, 250 frames per second, but the game is going nuts. Going into this, I was expecting to have a device that I could take with me and be able to play games without any compromises. I was not expecting to have a device I could take with me and play games better than I do even at home. So for Minecraft, I was able to get it up to a little over 300. Oh, it's at 350 now. Okay. I had to change some settings, VSync off, fast graphics, all that stuff, but the resolution's still full, running at the full 1440p resolution and almost 300 frames per second. <laughs> if you're gonna run this thing on battery power, probably don't run it at the highest performance modes. You could probably compromise on some frames, but if you want to, maybe you wanna impress your friends or something, 
you're gonna have to do some tweaks like in Valorant, turn off limit FPS on battery, stuff like that. You can manage the performance modes by pressing this button, depending on what you're doing on the device. You have a lot of options here, way more options than I ever thought I would ever need. They basically crammed a big beefy gaming PC in this slim little form factor. Of course, the biggest hurdles that they had to overcome were thermals and power. And this thing barely breaks a sweat, even on this like 80 degree day, because of the big fans that they have in this thing. That thing is working hard. I'm also happy to report that the battery will last you a full day of gaming or editing. Alright guys, I'm on a mobile hotspot. Yo. <laughs> I'm top of the leaderboard running from my mobile hotspot. <laughs> oh, I'm not anymore, damn it. I'm editing this video right now. Can't see anything. Gaming PCs are usually highly capable editing PCs too. Now, I'm not gonna be editing any 360 frame per second footage anytime soon, but I often edit multiple layers of 4K videos, which could be very processor intensive. This new Intel processor delegates tasks to specific cores with this new thing called Thread Director that the older generations don't have. The larger performance cores take care of the most power intensive processes, so that'll be something like a game, or in this case, Adobe Premiere editing this 4K video. And smaller efficiency cores take care of the smaller background processes like Discord or Spotify or whatever YouTube video you have running in the background while you work. That way, those less important tasks don't get in the way of the important stuff, like high frame rate gaming or high resolution editing. This processor also supports DDR5 RAM, which also makes multitasking more fluid. This computer tears through my video files better than my desktop could, and it's Thunderbolt 4 capable, so I can plug it into my dock just like I do with my other laptop, and use it as a desktop if I wanted to. If I blindfolded myself, I would never even realize I was on a laptop. I also would not be able to see what I was doing. Where am I? Who are you? In fact, I might just replace my home desktop with this. It's pretty old by this point, and I won't even need a KVM to switch between my other work laptops, because it's got a Thunderbolt 4 in it. Can't, can't do that one again. <laughs> so I'm just completely sick of trying to hack together these little devices that I have to try to play Valorant with my girlfriend when I go visit her. So this solves that need. Now I'll have uh, just as big of a beefy gaming PC while I'm out and about. I don't have to bring a whole tower or a dinky little thing that I can try to hack together. I can have all of the power of my home set up wherever I want. So I won't have to compromise on my gameplay whatsoever. And because this thing's better than my home desktop and I already have a Thunderbolt 4 set up, I'm gonna yeet that thing out of here. This thing's gonna replace that. I'm gonna stream from this and play games from this and everything. So I'm super thankful for Intel for sponsoring this and for just giving this to me. I'm pretty sure it's mine to keep, thank you. If you want more info on Intel's new super powerful mobile processing technology, you can click the link below to learn more. It does way more than Minecraft. So what do you guys think about this sort of high powered mobile processing getting 360 frames per second of Valorant in your lap? Leave it in the comments below, at me on Twitter and any and all of this other social media garbage. What would you do with something like this? Again, thank you Intel for sponsoring this video and thank you for sticking it out through the whole video. Make sure you slap a like if you liked it and I'll be back with a regular old video sometime this week. Have yourself a good week.